I'm a tuba judge and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now listen, have you been receiving your daily bread? Come on now, this is another opportunity. Are you ready? Declare this with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, you know, we've been talking about working in God's financial intelligence. And, and, and yesterday I was reading Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8. I think verse 8, yeah, verse 8. Well, he who sow it to the flesh, yeah. From verse, verse 6 to 8 to you. And, and today, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's just pray. Father, thank you. Your word is coming strong. And we receive every thought that is in your heart today for us. Nothing will be missed that you have intended to give to us. So we open our heart to receive all of it now. And I declare burdens have been lifted, yokes have been destroyed right now. Chains are broken in the life of everyone that's listening to me now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So then he says, I was talking to you yesterday about sowing in the flesh or sowing to the spirit. Now when you give, according to what he says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, he says, For he who soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption, but he who soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. When we begin to obey God where giving is concerned, and like I said, the tithe, because first and foremost, that one is not a free will giving. It's a debt that you owe. Every blessing you receive, God has a part in it. You see, that's why you can be arrested in a society for not paying tax. And, and isn't it amazing? You do, the, you do a job for the government and, you, and the government pays you, yet the government will still command you to pay tax. And if you don't pay that tax, you can be arrested for tax fraud. You see that? Where do you think they got that from? Anyway. So that's how it is with God. It's a command. It's not something you do, okay, I feel like giving my tithe. I don't feel like giving my tithe. <laughs> no. It's a command. Let that sink in your mind. It's a command. And you can get judged for not giving your tithe. You can get judged for not giving your tithe. Yes. They say, no, we are all under grace. We are all under grace. Brothers and sisters, grace operates by God's word. Grace doesn't nullify God's principles. Grace operates so you can be in Christ and still be broke. Yes. Because I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. The golden rule, you know, that Jesus said, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Okay, so now you say you're not going to give your tithe again for whatever reason. I'm angry. I'm not giving my tithe again. I will eat it. Okay, so if everybody now begin to treat you the same way you are treating others, because by you withholding your tithe, you are preventing others from receiving the blessing of God. So if everyone starts doing that where you are concerned, who's going to lose? You too. So, so when we tithe, we are not just obeying God. So we don't tithe out of fear. 
we tithe because we are walking in partnership with God to bring to pass his word and his covenant with Abraham by blessing every family of the earth. Now, I just want you to think about this. If every believer everywhere begins to function like this and, and practice this truth, and, and then I just see glory. I'm telling you, there's so much glorious. And you know what he says? Be ready to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, when we do this, guess what? You know, you just imagine everywhere, you know, someone just saying, wow, I just received some money from someone. And he said, God commanded him to send it to me. I just got money from someone. I just got blessed. Oh, wow. Someone just called me and said, God said you should pay my children's school fees. Whoa. Someone just called me and gave me money. And guess what? The money was just my house rent. Do you think, do you think people will be needing encouragement? Do you think people will be needing to follow up and say, oh, uh, you, we've not been seeing you in church. Oh, wait, you, 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 you are backsliding. Do you think all those things will be happening? Because the joy of salvation, the joy, the joy of salvation will be everywhere. This is not wishful thinking. I'm telling you the mind of God. This is what God thinks. This is how he operates. Now, when you begin to understand this, all I've been sharing with you, remember I started by telling you about giving of offerings. And then I told you how giving of offerings have to be by the Spirit of God. And you have to give it consciously. And then now we'll talk, we've been talking about tithe, and I'm telling you why it's so important that you tithe, and not only tithe, that you tithe right. Now, when you begin to do and practice these things and practice them well, you have already sealed something in your life. And what is that? God's continuous flow. You have connected yourself to the environment where you, 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 the flow will surely get to you. Now, the next thing that you need to begin to do in working in God's financial intelligence, it's this, cut out your distractions. Cut out your distractions. I'll explain what I mean by that. You see, you need money now. And, and the first thought that will come to your mind might just be, go and beg. Or go and borrow. Borrow from who? From that person or from the bank or you know these days now you can pick up your phone and take a loan without any hassles and then even the bank will send you you know now you qualify to take a loan of two million naira and it's just like that say oh okay let me try this thing out um i i, I need a loan so just dial start this 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 and you just dial start that 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 and bam, put all your details and the next thing your account is created. Whoa, just like that. Yes, just like that. But here is a trap. It's a trap. What's a trap? Take you out of God's financial system. I'll tell you this, and I found this to be true. If you yield to all those distractions, you will not put the pressure now you see you see what happens when you were supposed to put the pressure on the word of god you don't put it so you quickly take a loan and now when you can't pay that loan and then the creditors are disturbing you that's when you now want to start putting pressure on the word of god to pay that loan now you see the challenge with this see the challenge with that yeah. There's so much in my spirit I want to share with you. You see, the Lord taught me this many years ago. And he said to me, he said, son, I don't pay debts. And I 
And I was like, how? You know what the Lord taught me then? Ah, it, it's sweet to know the Lord. It's just sweet. I don't know how else to ex describe. It's just sweet. So, <clears throat> and then the Lord said to me, he said, look, asking me, is it going to take a loan? And then asking me to say, Lord, help me pay this loan is useless because I don't do that. I already commanded you not to borrow. Moses told the children of Israel, when you walk in the line, light of God, you will not borrow. You will learn. You will learn. You will not borrow. And in Romans, he told us, oh, no man, anything but love. So you see, when you get involved in borrowing, you have taken yourself out of God's system. And then you now run, run to God with the baggage of the loan. And say, Lord, they want to arrest me. Please help me. They want to take off my property. Please help me. And what do you want the Lord to do? Where is the word with which the Lord will operate in to pay that loan for you? And so <laughs> when the Lord shared this with me, I began to pray and say, okay, Lord, so... Is it that there's, a, there's an area where you sincerely cannot operate? What about mercy? And the Lord said, that's the reason I'm sharing what I'm sharing with you. So when a child of God finds himself in a situation of a loan or, or debt, what does he do? The first thing to do is repent. Father, I'm so sorry I've gotten myself in an environment I shouldn't have gotten myself involved with. I've disobeyed your word and I've taken this loan. I've borrowed. Lord, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Then, take an amount, take money, and say, Lord, I'm determined to come out of this debt. And it shall not be by might or by power, but by your spirit. So Lord, I take this money now, Lord, and I sow it as a seed into this person's life. Now, who's the person? The one you're owing. <laughs> And then you say, Lord, I'm sowing it into this person's life. And I receive a harvest for the seed. Don't say I'm paying loan. No, I'm sowing it. Now, this is between you and God. Don't go and tell the person, I'm not paying you back your loan. No, I'm sowing seed into your life. <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do things that will offend people. This is, I'm telling your relationship with the Lord. And the Lord hears you. And he knows now that you have come in the, under the environment of this word, give and it shall be given unto you. Now, but what works this now is repentance. First, repentance. And guess what? With that now, the Lord can open the windows for you. And he begins to bless you. And you take some more money and say, Lord, I release more seed into this person's life. You take some more money. Why you're doing, giving your tithe, of course, I release this not consciously until you come out of that loan, of that debt situation. You've got to fight yourself out of it. And that's where God will help you. I've just shared with you how, how the Spirit of God will come in and help you. I remember sharing this with a dear, dear sister of mine, you know, she, she was in debt. I just shared this and she said, ah, Pastor, this thing we're talking about, I'm actually owing some money. And I just got some money now. I'm thinking, it, it will pay that loan, but, but I'm thinking, I say, yes, this is what you should do. Take a seat 
and pay. And this taught her what to do. And she did that and, and paid that money. You know, not all of it, just part of it. And guess what? A few weeks down the line, someone calls and says, I want to invest in your business. And that person invested in her business and he shot her business to another dimension. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, I'm telling you. Got her into some good level of prosperity. These things work. Remember what I'm sharing with you? Working in God's financial intelligence. How to get yourself out of trouble without troubling anybody. <laughs> I mean, getting yourself out of trouble without troubling anybody. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.